Tonight, the Cleveland Indians close out the month of April with their second trip to the Windy City to take on the Chicago White Sox. They were in Chicago earlier in April for a four-game series. They split those four with Chicago. Now they're back for more. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. Two and a half weeks ago, Rick, we saw back-to-back two of the best pitch games you'll ever see. Of course, Carlos Rodon had the no-hitter, but the night before, Shane Bieber pitched a game that was every bit as good as Rodon's gym. I think it was the best pitch game that Bieber had in his career. He was so dominant in that start from the first pitch to the last. He threw 113 pitches in that ball game. He walked one, struck out 11, only three hits allowed in the complete game shutout. So, I mean, you can't pitch any better than what he did in that series. And when you look at him in his career, he's been dominant on the road. 23 road wins in his career. Only seven losses, a 277 ERA. 17 straight starts of eight or more strikeouts. If he could get one tonight, he will have the record. And, you know, the third most starts in MLB history through five starts when you want to talk about the strikeout. Only him and DeGrom are around Nolan Ryan. And something to keep an eye on. Coming off a 119 pitch performance in which he poured his heart out against the Yankees. Will there be any effect? We'll find out when the Indians take on the White Sox. Dallas Keuchel, the lefty, will go for Chicago. We'll be back with tonight's first pitch. We'll check in with Andre Knott, who has more on Shane Bieber, coming up next. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by Spectrum Mobile. Spectrum Mobile has unlimited talk, text, and data. Save up to 40%. Go to SpectrumMobile.com today. By your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. By Chevrolet, the Chevy Network dealers. And by Meyer. When we support the home team, we all win. Town as the Indians and the White Sox get ready to lock horns. It's a three-game weekend series, and the Indians have their ace on the hill tonight. Shane Bieber will go for the tribe. Andre not joins us now with more on the Indians' Cy Young winner. Well, you can see in Chicago, Dallas Keuchel is walking in from the bullpen, and Shane Bieber is getting ready to go to the, his side of things as well. We won't get Lucas Giolito versus Bieber this week like we did just a few weeks ago. But if you've noticed this year, with Shane Bieber being the ace and the Cy Young Award winner, it seems like every week he's lined up against the best pitcher from the other team. Some young pitchers would shy away from that. But Carl Willis, the Indians pitching coach, says Shane Bieber looks forward to it. He wanted to see Garrett Cole last week because that's who he is and what he wants to be for his teammates. He actually was very, very excited to learn that, that Garrett, Garrett Cole was pitching Saturday night. He, he felt like that was a win-win, and I, I felt like, you know, he went out and they matched each other pitch for pitch, and, you know, two pitches that, you know, one a little mislocated that left the ballpark and, and then another, and, and that was a game. So, I, again, I, I think just a, a great sign of maturity and, and his competitive spirit and belief in himself to go out and, and attack, and, you know, and attack a lineup that uh, the last time he faced them, things didn't go as he wanted. So uh, I, I thought it, it showed a lot about his – uh, maturing process. Matt, Rick, you could say a lot of things about an ace, and everybody has their different way of saying what makes an ace. To me, what I just heard from Carl Willis steps out more than all the strikeouts with Shane Bieber, more than all the wins. He wants to be at the top of that rotation. He wants to lead this pitching staff. And for a kid that's just 25 years old, that says a lot to me. And Rick, it says a lot about his maturity that Shane Bieber doesn't have to be Garrett Cole or Lucas Giolito. He just has to be himself, and he knows that's good enough. He's very comfortable in his own skin. I can tell you that. And you know what? He's a treat to watch. We are very fortunate to have someone this good with the command and the way he pitches. Uh, so we look forward to it every fifth day. Well, he's trying to get the Indians back in the win column. We'll have the first pitch coming up next. behind left-hander Dallas Keuchel on a beautiful night for baseball on the south side. Yeah, the 33-year-old left-hander Dallas Keuchel. He will be tonight's Northern Ohio Hyundai starting pitcher. This will be his second start against the Indians. He started back uh, April 12th. Had a no decision. He went five innings, gave up three hits and three runs. They did hit a home run off him, but they're going to have to make him get the ball up because he will feature a lot of ground balls. Terry Francona starting lineup brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Cesar Hernandez will lead it off. Jordan Luplo in the two-hole, followed by Jose Ramirez. Bradmail Reyes in the cleanup spot, second in the American League in home runs. Eddie Rosario batting fifth. Ahmed Rosario will hit sixth. Then Roberto Perez, Yu Chang, and Andreas Jimenez bats ninth. 
And the White Sox defense looks like this. They are uh, rated last in the league uh, when it comes to defense. They have made 20 errors. It's Vaughn on the left, Robert in center, Eaton over and right. It'll be Moncada at third, Anderson at short, Madrigal at second, Abreu at first, Yasmani Grandal doing the catching. Bill Welke will call the balls and strikes. Ben May is at first base. Trip Gibson down at second, and Chris Conroy is your third base umpire. Cesar Hernandez making his way to home plate, and we're just about ready to go. White Sox are red hot. They have won six of their last seven games. They're now 14 and 10 on the year. And they trail front running Kansas City by just a game and a half in the central. The Indians are four games off the pace, third place, and 11 and 12 on the year. First pitch is in there for a strike, and we're underway. Cesar Hernandez against the White Sox. Three out of 17. He has drawn three walks. Just down low to even the count. Well, that's where he, he usually lives is down in that strike zone right there, and you got to try and make him get that ball up if possible. Just by the mound, charging in Tim Anderson on the run. Throws him up. One away. Storylines brought to you by Wayside Furniture. We'll see how the Indians approach the changeup of Dallas Keuchel. If they don't adjust, you'll see a lot of what you just saw. Balls beat into the ground. And Shane Bieber looking for eight strikeouts to tie the major league record. Jordan Luplo steps in. Both Luplo and Jose Ramirez with six home runs, one behind Brad Mel Reyes for the team lead. Missed outside. 2 0. Oh. You know, you look at Keichel and you would think, okay, this guy, his reverse splits, left handers. Are doing a number. They're hitting 385 off him. Right, he's just 225 because of that good changeup that he has and the way he can mix it up. Out of play, and that's tops right there. 88. That's his fastball. Game time temperature tonight in Chicago: 48 degrees. Not much of a win. Which is a rarity in Chicago. Missed outside, three and one. This is what you like to do get in the hitter's counts off him, see if he comes back, change up, three one. He will. It's his favorite pitch. And that's ball four. So the Indians have drawn their first walk with one out here in the first inning. Keiko came in with seven walks against 12 strikeouts in 25 innings of work. Well, the White Sox pitching staff, either they've got a book on Jose Ramirez or they have just executed very well. He is just one for 19, though that one was costly for Chicago was a big home run. He goes after the first pitch. It was in the zone, but he fouled it off. Well, this White Sox team, they have the Indians number when you think about it because they don't score many runs, and neither both teams don't. They're, they're all very close games. Well pitched games, it seems like, over the last few years. Ramirez gets into one deep center field. Back is Robert on the track. At the wall, and he makes the catch. And back to first base goes loop load, two down. Well, he got it right to the base of the wall. Hit it well. He goes back, and he knows he's got a he's got a beat on it right now. 
as he catches it he goes back to the wall but they get the second out gets it in quickly. So two gone for Fran Mill Reyes. And he's another guy that the White Sox bottled him up early on. He started out 0 for his first 14 against Chicago pitching before that last game here in Cleveland, and he went three for four. Yeah, he's been a different guy on the road compared to home, you know? The huge difference. 275 points. Right. Um, difference. Right. Guys, a year ago was the complete opposite with Fran Miller. He was great on the road. Yeah, yeah. He's home. got to get that stroke uh, and, and pack it in that bag and take it on the road with him because he was swinging so well here. Can it get in your head, Arch? The, you know what I mean? As it goes along, knowing you're not hitting well somewhere. I, I, you know, I, it doesn't matter. I guess every day's different. But you know, it, unfortunately, it, it just hasn't worked out so far when he's been on the road. Let's hope it doesn't continue. They took one right down the middle. Three pitches. Ends the first. A walk and a strikeout. The White Sox are coming to bat. It's tonight. He will be the Northeast Ohio Ford Dealers Indian starting pitcher. He beat the White Sox earlier. That was on April 13th. Complete game shutout. Uh, he's got his work cut out for him. Interesting to see how he's going to start this game out after throwing 119 pitches in his last start. Tony LaRusse is starting nine for Chicago. Tim Anderson in the leadoff spot, followed by Adam Eaton. Yohan Moncada will bat third. Jose Abreu is in the cleanup spot. Yermin Mercedes leading the league at batting average. Then Yasmani Grandal, Luis Robert, Andrew Vaughn, Nick Madrigal hitting ninth. Tim Anderson over his last 11 games hitting 340. Yeah, this is a White Sox team. They lead the American League and run scored in the first inning. 18 of them, by the way. And this is one guy that can set the the tempo right. Well, the White Sox have been a fast starter. They have scored first in 17 of their 24 games. And Terry Francona believes a big reason for the White Sox early offensive success is Tim Anderson. He gets on base. He can start rallies. That opens things up for other hitters behind him. Yeah, and if you do it in the first inning, they had scored, what, six straight times this year with the, in the first inning, consecutive games, and it tied a record, but they just have weapons. They don't like to let you settle in. Out of play, it's 0-2. Remember the last time the Indians were there, they scored six runs in the first inning off Plesak there, and they've scored seven in the first against the Tribe this year. Now the 0-2. High fastball. I'm curious to see, maybe not necessarily the adjustments, but what Bieber's performance against the White Sox, what that does to their hitters mentally. Do they, do they find another gear to match Bieber? Swing and a miss. He blew it right by him. And that's a great start for Shane. One down. Well, I'm just going to keep an eye on his command because if he commands his pitch and he's going to get strikeouts and get outs like he does every day because he pitches so far, uh, you know, ahead in the count. Excellent right off the edge. Gets uh, strikeout number one. Now here's Adam Eaton. And he threw the fastball right by him. You look at Beaver, this is going to be his 10th start against the White Sox. He's 3 and 2 in his career against them. They know one thing, they better bring their lunch pail because this guy is a tough at bat, a tough to figure out. Two fastballs to eat and two swings and misses. Wasting any time, Bieber. Breaking ball in the dirt. Did he go? They appeal. He did not.
came back with another beautiful breaking ball and strikes him out two away. Let's take a look at the Indians defense behind Bieber tonight. It'll be Eddie Rosario and left Ahmed Rosario in center and Luke Lowe is over and right. Jose Ramirez at third. Jimenez is at short. Hernandez at second. Chang is at first. And Roberto Perez behind the plate. Starts him off with a first pitch breaking ball and a beauty in for strike one. Shane Bieber and Garrett Cole both averaging just a little better than 14 strikeouts per nine innings pitched. with that breaking ball one and two the count on Johan Moncada got to the fastball to stay alive well I wanted to take him off that breaking ball so he went fastball up and away but those hitters they they still they don't want to get cheated on the fastball. Well, Bieber does get a lot of strikeouts on that fastball as well. Things that jumps out to me is that Chicago's aggressive. I mean, a lot of oh, swings. Yeah. They're not they're not looking at pitches. They've faced him before. They don't want to get to two strikes. He's got so many weapons to put you away. Swing and a miss with another incredible breaking ball, and Shade Bieber starts the game by striking out the side. The American League strikeout leader Shane Bieber now with 60 on the year. Second inning Eddie Rosario to lead off for Cleveland. Rosario who made a habit of making himself right at home whenever he used to visit Cleveland as a member of the Twins. But so far, since he's done an Indians uniform, his success batting has come on the road. He's hit 294 so far in road games. Yeah, and then uh, Keuchel's last start against the Indians there was Rosario hit the home run to left center field to get him going in that ball game before they were able to come back and tie it up. That came in the second inning. Keiko bounced back his last uh, outing. Didn't walk a batter. Seven hits and six scoreless innings against the Rangers. In fact, that walk to Luplo in the first inning snapped a two start stretch, in which he had not allowed a walk. Yeah, four no decisions this year. He didn't give up a run in, the, in his last start and then had a no decision. You know, three times in his career with the Astros, he pitched over 200 innings, but nowadays, you know, he's well, so far five starts, 25 five. innings. He's a five inning pitcher. Yeah, he go five when they have a bullpen like they have. I mean the White Sox starting pitching is number one in the league. They they've done a nice job this year and, and what helps is that team always the first five innings they have the lead. You, you mentioned it how they score early so they play from in front. It takes a little pressure off these pitchers. That's how the Indians did it for the last few years and that's the key but they're falling behind a lot of games now. Yeah. Now they're scoring more from the sixth inning on instead of the first five innings. It'll be nice to turn the page and get to the month of May. The 3 2 pitch. Popped him up. Is it playable here for Moncada? Into foul ground to the railing. He can't get there. And Rosario has new life. Moncada. Either hit his knee or his foot up against that railing when he went into it. Limping back to third. 
You know, everybody will be happy to see the, uh, the calendar turn to the month of May, except for Dallas Keuchel. Yeah. His, his April ERA of 282 is fourth best among all active pitchers. Only Jacob DeGrom, Garrett Cole, and Johnny Cueto have a better ERA in the season's opening month. In off the plate, ball four, so he's walked two in two innings. Well, he's being careful of the guys he thinks can do some damage, I think, to him early in this game because he knows he doesn't want to fall behind when you have Bieber on the mound. Well, download the MLB app to get in-game video highlights, live pitch by pitch, breaking news, player updates, stats, and much more. Well, and not only that, Rick, but he, he has the same numbers we have. And he's probably looking down at the six, seven, eight, nine hitters in this Indians lineup who are right now combined eight for their last 89. Right. Yeah, he knows. And as we said, the Rosario took him deep the, the last time he faced him. The Rosario that's at first base, that is. Yes. Ahmed Rosario with a double play ball to short. And that's the one thing he can do. He's the master at getting a ground ball double play. He's done it now 139 times. This guy, he's just a master at getting it done. That's what happens. It's not the walk so bad, it's what you do after the walk. And he gets the ground ball double play, so he erases that walk that he put a guy on. Made his pitch. Now Roberto Perez. I mean, 60% in his career, he's a ground ball pitcher, so there's a good chance he's going to get you to beat it into the dirt. Which goes back to, you know, our uh, one of our storylines. What will the approach be? You know this guy. There are. It's not a big secret what he's going to try to do. So. As hitters, and we talked a little bit to Terry Francona before the game about this, you have to do what? Well, you've got to uh, take that pitch away. You either move up in the box or, or you, you, you know, you've got to do something. Perez did that uh, when we were in Cincinnati when he faced a left-hander and hit a home run off him. We were talking about the same thing when Miley, he faced Miley. He said he moved up in the box, so I would assume he's going to do it here with Keuchel on the mound. But you got to do that. You got to sit on his changeup. You're going to get more of them that he's going to throw for strikes, and he's going to show you the fastballs. It's almost like pick one or the other. Yeah, stick with your yeah. plan. And you know what? I, I would stick with the changeup because he's going to throw more of them. And yeah. you got a better chance of making him get it up as opposed to if he shows you that fastball, he's going to come right back with the changeup anyway. He shows it to just keep you honest. Another ground ball out. Middle of the second, no score. Prorated season ticket plans are on sale and begin with games in June. Plans start with just 12 games and all include uh, exclusive seating, discount options, priority exchange, and other great perks. If you'd like to buy a plan for more info, just call 216-420-HITS or you can visit Indians.com. So Shane Bieber goes out, strikes out the side in the first inning. He comes out for his warm-up pitches. Before the second inning, the first one goes all the way to the backstop, six feet over the catcher's head. Perfect. All I can think of is Kevin Costner and uh, Bull Durham saying, hit the mascot at this next pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let those guys get too comfortable with Yeah, well, he had a 13-pitch first inning. He had nine swings. Uh, the, the, the White Sox swung nine times, but he's, he had six swings and misses and struck out the side. And here's Jose Abreu. And I guess a little high. Abreu was just one for his first 13 against Cleveland pitchers before he went three for his last three in that one game they played here in Cleveland. Second game was postponed after we got snowed on. In the air, right field, loop low. 
One down. Well, here's Bieber's uh, last start. Statcast 3D by, brought to you by Google Cloud. He had 11 punch outs. You can see the four on the uh, four seamer, the slider, the curveball. He's just, it was pinpoint. He had 75% strikes in that ball game. Yeah, and when he gets ahead, as you pointed out, it, it just, he puts hitters on their heels and he'll get strikeouts on pitches that are out of the zone. Because his command is so good. The command is good, but can you guys see that he's more aggressive with the fastball? And I know this is only five hitters in. A lot more fastballs early well, in counts than we saw in the last Speeding him up now, yeah. and then, uh, you know, as the game goes on, he'll slow it back down. I was curious how he would set the tempo after right. that last start, but I'll tell you what, he came out firing. Good curve, and somehow Mercedes lays off that pitch. Matt, did you see where the first pitch to Mercedes was? Plays off of your number pretty well. He yeah. stayed away with the heater. Yeah. Knowing his aggressiveness. Mercedes six for eight when he swings at first pitches. Lines it to center field. No surprise. He's got the first hit of the game. Ahmed Rosario had trouble with it, but Mercedes holds with a one out single. So the American League batting average leader. Well, and he just continues to, to get base hit after base hit. Already. Set the record for the month of April. Then he breaks a, a Brayu's record. There, a curveball down, and he has that high leg kick he does early in the count. But boy, this guy just continues to just get base hit after base hit. Now has 34 hits, which is a, a rookie record for the White Sox. I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, and I don't want I won't do that, but if this guy continues doing it, will there ever be a story like this if this guy can continue hitting 300 or Leading the league in hitting and never have been in the big leagues before this. Well, he only had the what one at one bat, at bat and then he was year. sent out last right. year. I, he's got to go face other teams. He's done a good job yeah. against yeah. us. I mean, and I, like I said, I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but to still be hitting the 400s, the last day of eight. It's a, it, it is a great story. I mean, you know, he's driving the ball. He's driving in runs. It's one thing to stay hot for a series, maybe a week. Right. He's put together a month now. Yeah. He has Monty Grandal takes a fastball strike. He's about the only hitter in this lineup, really, that has struggled. Just two for his last 36. Tony LaRussa kind of publicly giving him the old vote of confidence, saying that. His numbers will improve. They still strongly believe in Grandall. But when you look up at the end of April and you see 118 up there on the batting average line, that's that can shake your confidence. Yeah, but you know, we talk about this every year. You don't want to look up at that scoreboard. You don't want to see the numbers because you know that that could get in your head. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of guys that are that's happening to now. You just got to put it behind you and say, hey, I, I got to start all over and just go out and put up quality at bats every day. Breaking ball had him almost chase after it. They appeal and they said he did not go. Two and two. That breaking ball just a little bit off the plate, maybe down a little bit. Pretty good looking pitch though, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It was a tough one to lay off. Could have very easily been called. Man, Two pretty good takes. One that was awfully close. Okay, you don't want to chase it. Well, then I may throw one for a strike and get you. Three-man shift, right side of the infield for Cleveland. Grandall awaits the three-two pitch. Runner is not going. Swing and a miss. He struck him out, and that's why that runner was not going. When you strike out as many as Bieber does, you don't want to run yourself right out of the inning. It's a little slider that time. And uh, gets his fourth strike out. He get, and that was in off the plate, but you can see our Buick stat, most 10 strikeout games. Bieber right on top with 12. 
Here is Luis Robert. He's been a tough out for Cleveland so far this year, and he lines one in the right center field. That's oh. a base hit. And Rosario went for the catch. He didn't come up with it. And the White Sox are going to get the first run of the game. Yeah, on a bad angle, a bad route run by Rosario. This is the first time that you've seen it really cost him. He went for a, a ball that he, he was in front of, and the ball got by him. And you can't afford, you've got to always keep that ball in front of you. In this situation, it looked like it was going to drop, but he thought he could catch it. Not a center fielder. But watch, he's going to slice it into right center. Now let's watch the angle. He comes running in like he was going to catch it and then had to go back out. You know, he veered out. He came in too fast, too quickly before he knew where the ball was. And it gets by him and it's going to cost Bieber a run here. And with two outs, Mercedes running all the way. He doesn't run well. But once Rosario was unable to yeah. keep the ball in front of him, it's an easy run for the White Sox. That's why you play it, and if, if you don't catch it, it's a single. You just get it in, and it's first and third and two outs, and you keep the, give the pitcher an opportunity to get out of the inning. Now Andrew Vaughn. Fastball up high. Vaughn has reached in 13 of the 15 games he's played. He did not go. It's 2 and 0. Oh. So once again the White Sox score first 18 out of 25 games that's been the case for Chicago swing and a miss Back with the same pitch. Man, it's two and two. Just stayed on the outside edge. That slider wasn't going to give in to him. He did. And they struck him out to end the inning. Five K's for Bieber, but the White Sox strike first, lead it one to nothing.
the cutter and the back to back walks to put him in a hole. Tomorrow, it's a perfect trifecta. You see, because it's Derby Day tomorrow, and it's mm -hmm. a trifecta. Yeah. yeah and it's all here. Catch the Sox, Bulls, and Blackhawks on NBC Sports Chicago and NBC Sports Chicago Plus. Coverage begins at 2.30 with White Sox pregame live. Bulls are still in the hunt for that postseason tournament in the NBA, trying to be in the top ten in the East. Adam and Stacy will have the call. Stacy does. I saw it on Twitter again today. He's got his own hot sauce now. Good for him. Well, why does he pass along? Now, you eat that stuff. I don't. But why does he pass along a couple of bottles? You can uh, you can put it on the cookies you brought to the park today. I'm very happy that you substituted stuff in there. You don't you don't like spicy food. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. The old I like it but doesn't like me. Uh-huh. Yeah. One ball, no strikes. Ball in the dirt. All right. So if you're being too fine, but now the bases are loaded... How, how do you find the middle ground here if you're Dallas Keuchel? Well, you're facing a guy who usually hits you very well. Nice block by Grandal again. Uh, eventually, you're going to have to come to him. You got no place to put him. It's a change up low, and it's 2-0. This is, uh, in two years, Dallas Keuchel's most walks he's ever thrown in a White Sox jersey already. Ramirez on the ground, and Tim's not going to get there. Cleveland will take the lead with a second run. Roberts' throw goes into third, and that's an extra base for Ramirez. It's 2-1 to one Cleveland here in the third. The two walks have come back to haunt him, and... For Luis Robert, you don't make this throw to third base. With one out in the inning, you have to make sure that the double play in is order, and you can't let the trailer go to second. You don't have that great a shot at him at third base, and Ramirez, a good base runner, and the trailer on the play goes into second. Now a ground ball. Instead of turning a double play and out of the inning, it gets you a run, as does a fly ball. So now front Mio Reyes takes a ball low, and Dallas Keuchel, who normally does not argue with his command like this, is having a frustrating night for himself in terms of location. <laughs> Chopper to third. Moncada's got a charge. The Indians get a run, and the Sox trade the out for the run. Luplo scores Ramirez to third. Reyes leads the way and runs batted in on this team, and that's his 18th on that little chopper. He left you on with only one play. That to first base. The Indians have a two-run lead behind their ace. That will be a fourth run for Cleveland. Straight up the middle for Rosario. Even though the batting average is down, Eddie Rosario has driven in his 14th run, and that's a high slider. Slider down, probably turns into a ground ball. This is up, turns into a line drive. Sox walked four batters in the entire series with the Tigers overall. And Cleveland now has four walks through two and two-thirds tonight. And four runs.
and Keuchel could not throw a strike there for a while. He has labored this inning, and the Indians come right back and make him pay after the White Sox got on the board in the bottom half of the second. Ground ball to short again, and that will end the inning. The Indians score four in the third to turn the tables on Chicago. Back here. The Indians have a 4-1 to lead now. Shane Bieber showered with a, what equals their biggest offensive inning of this season. They also had a four-run inning against the Yankees. But, boy, that was a, just what the doctor ordered for Bieber. Yeah, he had a chance to get out of last inning. They gave up uh, the run on... Uh, the way Ahmed Rosario went after that uh, uh, two out ball and they scored and they, I'll tell you what they come right back and give him the lead so he's got to feel good about that Nick Madrigal chases and swings and misses. Madrigal with a hit in nine of his last 11 games. This guy really doesn't start to hit until he gets two strikes. <laughs> Well, he's one tough out. He finds a way to put the uh, the bat on the ball and put it in play and make things happen. Off the end of the bat, near the line, long run. Luplo can't get there. It's off his glove. It's a fair ball. Madrigal into second. He'll stop there with a the leadoff double. Well, yeah, it was off the end of the bat. Luplo had a beat on it. He got there. He got a glove on it. He just couldn't hold on to it. Goes off the end of his glove, and it'll go as a double. There's a slider away. Now, do you say he just puts the ball in play. He cuts that swing down. He puts it in fair territory, and I thought Luplo was going to get there and make the catch. He had a long run to go. He dives. He's right there. He just goes off the end of his glove. So that'll be a leadoff double for Madrigal, his fourth of the season. Tim Anderson struck out his first time up. Breaking ball, missed up and in. And he keeps it fair down the right field line. Coming around third, Madrigal will score. And it's a 4-2 to two game. Anderson just reached out, poked it the other way. I'm not so sure Madrigal was thinking about scoring all the way on that play. Watch, but he just kept going. Watch Anderson stay on this ball. The only thing was elevated. That made it a little easy for him to go that way. He let it track deep on the fastball. Slaps it the other way. A nice piece of hitting right there. But he's going to get over there. He didn't have a play at, at Madrigal. You just get it in. Keep him at first base. So the White Sox come right back. And now here's Adam Eaton. has 15 hits over his last 15 games including four doubles a triple and two home runs well the guy has 18 RBIs in the number two hole in this lineup he's one of their best hitters with runners in scoring position if he, he is the best
Anderson takes off. Throw by Roberto is way high, and a nice job by Jimenez to keep it from going into the outfield. Fourth steal of the year for Tim Anderson. Had a pretty good jump, and I think uh, Roberto felt like he had to rush it and get rid of that ball quickly, knowing he had a good jump in the throw. You never see him. It, it, Jimenez did a nice job just to catch that ball and keep it on the infield. So you give Anderson a stolen base. That's his fourth. And now Eaton has a runner in scoring position. Chase the ball in the dirt. It's one and two. White Sox ended up playing that doubleheader yesterday against uh, Detroit. He ended up serving his two-game suspension in that doubleheader. What he was suspended for when the last time the Indians were in town. One game. Yeah, he... Or was it one game? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah locked him up. And Eaton is the sixth strikeout victim of Shane Bieber already tonight. Well, watch the curveball. He, he throws it backdoor style coming out and coming down into the zone. A really good pitch. The umpire stayed with it nicely. You can see it up in the upper quadrant of the strike zone. That's his knuckle curveball. That's strikeout number six. And now Yoan Moncada. Went down swinging his first time up. Takes a look at Anderson. Just wants to keep an eye on him, make sure he knows that I haven't forgotten about you. Well, that's a beauty. He's got a really good breaking ball tonight, both sides of the plate. It's a beauty. I yeah. mean, Rick, it's whether he's throwing it back door to the left-handed hitter or down and into the left-handed hitter. Know it. It, 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 he's throwing the curveball. He's throwing the slider. He's uh, he, uh, once again he is has pinpoint control with his breaking stuff. See if he might bounce one here to get him to chase it 0-2. the glove of Bieber and it gets through around third scoring is Tim Anderson and the White Sox have answered back with two here in the third to cut the gap to a single run it's now four to three and give Moncada credit because not many guys get down in the count against Shane Bieber and live to tell about it. not 0 2 they don't and, and this one might and he may have tried to bounce this one but it, it was still down look at Perez was going to block that ball in the dirt but he gets enough of it to get through the infield. So that's a key two out base hit in this ball game. 0 2 pitch gets through the infield. They cut it to one. Moncada's 15th RBI. And now Jose Abreu. Abreu fly to right his first time up. And a fastball strike. The 
Abreu comes in fifth in the league with 19 runs batted in. And since the start of the 2019 season, nobody in baseball has driven home more runs than yeah. Abreu. He has over, what, 200? 202. Yeah. yeah. Well, right now, you don't say this much with Shane Bieber on the mound because of how dominant he is, but it's a matter of just limiting the damage. They've scored a couple of runs. Top hitters in the lineup at the plate. Yeah, I mean, uh, Bieber on the year, they were 1 for 22 on 0-2 pitches uh, and, and before he gave up that second hit to Moncada. Bieber did have a pickoff in that game in Chicago. Still filling up the strike zone, but you got to give credit to the guys with the bats some once in a while, and they've done a nice job this inning. Well, I, I'm sure they tried to change their plan of attack against Bieber tonight. Jammed him, popped him up. Center field, backpedaling the second baseman Hernandez will put it down two away. This is where they want to go with this guy. You get the two strikes, run a fastball in on his hands. They couldn't get the barrel out, as especially, and I think they knew that. He went and fouled off that pitch yeah, before on the breaking ball. You see how off balance he was and he was looking away? If he's trying to cover away, you got to get some respect and go back inside, which they did, and they got the easy out. So two gone now for Yermin Mercedes, who singled in the second inning. Fastball came back over the heart of the plate. And he took it for strike one. Well, he had a base hit on the breaking ball in his first at bat. And that was the first hit of the game for the White Sox with one out in the second. Painted the outside corner. I mean, you can't make a better pitch than this right here. It had some comeback to it. That might have been about a ball whip off the plate, but it had comeback to it, and it, he got the call. Stayed with the express, tried to get him to fish, but he's not biting there one and two. No, this is the one thing where, that makes this young man a good hitter is watch he changes his approach. He gets the two strikes. You don't see the high leg kick. He just tries to stay short and get through the baseball, not lifting that front foot. See the crouch? And no stride at all, but a good uh, good sequence. Seven strikeouts for Shane Bieber. White Sox get a pair. Option for 2021. It's a flex voucher plan. 
Plans start with as few as 20 vouchers and can be redeemed in quantities up to eight. Vouchers also carry a discount out of uh, box office pricing. Call 216-420-HITS or you can visit Indians.com. Well, back and forth we go so far, 4-3. The Indians are on top. Roberto Perez will lead off the fourth inning. Dallas Keuchel made 27 pitches in the first two innings. Needed 27 pitches to get out of the third. And Roberto swings at the first offering. And that's out number one. Take a look at the injury report brought to you by the attorneys at Elk and Elk. Garrett Crochet, hard thrower from the left side on the injured list for the White Sox. Adam Wainwright dealing with COVID for St. Louis. Andrew Miller has a toe blister. And he pitched yesterday. I, I watched that game. He pitched, and then he came out with that toe blister. Huh. But the first one, Crochet. Remember we were talking about younger pitchers before the game, gentlemen, and how yeah. not having a full season last year could play into it? Crochet never – remember, Arch, when he came up here in the last week of the season, he was throwing 100 miles an hour. Yeah, he was – Never got back up there this year, and they're worried that they may have – uh, he's got that back injury that may be like uh, Clevenger had two years ago. Another weak ground ball. And another out, two down. Well, that's exactly what they wanted to see from Keuchel, coming back out this inning, get back in the zone, get your ground balls going. It's So far, what's it been, uh, three pitches? Four. Well, it's only the fourth inning, but the score being four to three is a little unusual. These two teams since 2015, so you're going back now six years, their average score is about four to three. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. It's under, under eight runs a game. It's amazing that these two teams see each other so often. You would think at some point, well, the offenses would get the upper hand, but the pitching always seems to kind of control the tempo in these matchups once in a great while somebody will bust out and have a you know a, yeah. an offensive game but for the most part they're going to be two runs or less it seems like Jimenez is the one that got it started in the second with a one out single he hit a breaking ball off of Keuchel and then he ended up losing it because he, you know he was pitching out of that stretch and just couldn't get the ball up Struck him out, and Keiko gives his team just what they were looking for, a chance to get right back up the bat against Shane Bieber. Here's the ballpark view of tonight's game from our T-Mobile coverage cam. White Sox scored first with a run in the second. The Indians countered with four in the third. Chicago got two back in the third inning. Now Yasmani Grandal leads off the home half of the fourth, and he takes a first pitch strike from Shane Bieber. Bieber has struck out seven. Struck out the side to start the game. And it's 0-2 on Grandal. Back-to-back -back change ups for Bieber to the left-hander. Grandal 0 for his last 13. And away, two and two. Sw 
swing and a miss. He struck him out. And Shane Bieber has now set a new major league record with his 18th consecutive game of eight strikeouts or more. Incredible. He is, uh, yeah. In a world by, him, by himself right there. And it's going to continue. And he was, uh, as you mentioned, sharp right at the outset today. Luis Robert fouls off the breaking ball. Every Robert. Time, every time he goes out there, he just, he, he puts up these numbers, these strikeout numbers, and he just, you just marvel at the level of consistency that he has already attained in his career. Two down. You, you, you truly do, but I mean, we get to see it every five days. And, and it doesn't change because he continues to go out there and just command the baseball and get things done. Get ahead in the count. It's the same M.O. every game. I mean, it's not that I don't feel like we take it for granted when we watch him pitch. We know and appreciate how good he is, how how dominant he has become is as it? a starting pitcher. But, I mean, he's doing things that just sometimes you just shake your head at how good and, and the consistency thing. So, you know, you watch guys go out and have a great game, and then five days later you're like, is that the same pitcher? But with Bieber, ah. Another defensive miscue for Cleveland. I don't know if uh, Ramirez might have thought that ball was going to be foul, but he came up and as he was trying to get it out, and look, he just dropped the ball. Ooh. It was a fair ball, and then we'll see how they score this. Never really caught it to begin with. It's almost like he pinned it up against his jersey. Matt, to go back to what you were saying, and this is, I was going to say this a few weeks ago when we were watching Bieber. Is this because you look at those names that were up there against him, and you see like Randy Johnson, you see Pedro Martinez. All, those, play. all those guys threw 90, you know, like they had the big fast balls. Is that why some may watch what Shane Bieber is doing and not? realize how great he is you know what I mean like Bob Gibson like well I mean as you said I mean Randy Johnson was was freakish because you know he was left-handed he was 6'10 right. I mean he threw the ball by people Pedro Martinez you wondered if anybody how anybody ever got a hit off of him at times those guys were the best in their time right you know, when you think about it they were the best in their time like Gibson was like uh, Marichal was like Seaver was Bieber's in that category. He's, He's one of the best. Okay. The guys strike out more now than what they used to, but I'll tell you what, this guy, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what generation he pitches in. He'd be striking people out. Yeah. He's, a, he's in a class by himself, you know, with the he elite really few. It's amazing. You get DeGrom in, in there, and you get a few guys in today's game. And he's done it basically from the day he came up from the minor leagues. There haven't been any hiccups. There hasn't been like a, a month where you go, maybe he's got to learn this or learn That's that. That's what surprises me. He's done it, and, and he's matured, and he just continues to get better. Right. And Not usually guys can right. do it. Usually early. there's a hiccup at some point in time. Yeah, you may have a few setbacks here or there. He hasn't. Inning over, four complete, 4-3 four, Cleveland. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk. Proud partners of the Cleveland Indians, call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. And by Cleveland Clinic, Ohio's best orthopedic care. Fifth inning in Chicago, 4-3. Cleveland leads it. Top of the order, Cesar Hernandez. 
Watkins scored in the third. Second inning in a row, they've come out, swung at the first pitch, and ground it out. Mid-game recap brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Jose Ramirez drove in a pair with that base knock. And then Eddie Rosario capping the four-run inning with an RBI single. But Chicago came storming right back. Tim Anderson and Johan Moncada with RBI singles to cut the gap to one run. They did such a good job in that third inning of making him get the ball up that, you know, now he's, he's recovered and, and they're going after that first pitch again. Jordan Luplo has walked twice tonight. Well, he's the, he called that a strike. He didn't like that call because that was a fastball that was off the edge about a ball with. And, you know, you can't give him that fastball. That's his show pitch. Well, like you were saying earlier, as a hitter, and Luplo trying to punch one in, but it hangs in the air for out number two. If you sit on the changeup, he doesn't have enough to really throw. You can still spoil a good fastball. Sure. But if you sit on the fastball, the chances of him actually throwing one that you can hit for a strike are not very good. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, the approach would be sit change up. You're going to get it. Two down for Jose Ramirez. Jose almost left the yard in the first and then drilled the two run knock up the middle. Michael, a guy that, you know, he's in the 60, 60, mid 60s with pitches, 66. The most he's thrown is uh, twice 93 pitches. The last time it was 68 against the Indians. So he could be coming near the end right here. As we mentioned, a five inning pitcher. You said he's got five stars, about yeah. 25 innings. I think if they if they can get him through this one, it, it would be, they'd be fine with it. Top of the zone fastball 86 now it was 88 tops. See, it, it seems like he's in a little better rhythm when he's out of the full windup. You know what I mean? Yeah. He can get his body into it and then he can place it a little better. Comes out of that stretch where he's got to get a little slide step. The command isn't quite like it is now out of the full windup. Payoff pitch. Ramirez lines it, and Tim Anderson stole it from him. Seven straight set down by Dallas Keuchel. Today's Tribe Rewards code is Jimenez. You can enter the uh, code at triberewards.com in the next 24 hours to earn your points. Tribe Rewards allows season ticket holders to earn points by redeeming codes online for exclusive merchandise and experiences. Tim Anderson batting for the third time tonight. Looks at a breaking ball in the dirt. Lines that one into right center field. Luplo cuts it off, and Tim Anderson has his second hit of the ball game. He does such a great job of staying on the ball, taking it the other way. This breaking ball's upstairs. It helps him a little bit, but he waited back. You see where he just double clutched and those hands stayed back before he really committed. That ball was up, it was in, he takes it the other way, and they have their leadoff man aboard again.
Adam Eaton has struck out twice tonight. First time swinging, last time looking. Close pitch. Yeah. And because Roberto popped right. up quote, out of the crouch, I think the umpire didn't stay with the call. It, it, it might have blocked him. Might have blocked him out because he said it was inside. No, he got a good look at it. And I, I think that Anderson bluffed there, but you know, 0 2, you may figure he's going to throw a breaking ball and you may take off on a, on a pitch like that. But that time he threw a really good fastball, was not called. Another fastball. Two and two now. Bieber wants to start over again. Perez goes through it. He wanted a breaking ball, a changeup, fastball in, slider. Going with a heater away. He's not going to give in to him with a breaking ball yet. Runner goes. It's in time. They got him. That should have been strike three, too. I mean, that should be a strike him out, throw him out. If he doesn't give him that ball on the inside corner, that one right there was a strike. I mean, let's take a look at this. He's going to hear something. That was right there. And Perez was ready for him, man, to run. And that's why Bieber wanted to throw the fastball, I think. Uh-oh. They might challenge this. Look at, well, hey, there's the pitch uh, uh, that I thought was a fastball. and was They are going to challenge it. Okay. They're saying the hand got on the bag before Jimenez tagged him. The ball certainly beat him, so there's no reason why it shouldn't. Looked like the tag was up. up on the shoulder, yeah. though. I, I I think you're right when he came out to take it. Let's see from this angle. He's coming in from the outside. Boy, that's going to be close either way you look at it. I, I would thought the pitch it was going to be a strike him out, throw him out. To be honest with you, but. Well, they obviously have more looks than what we've been able to see from the guys in Chicago. Because if that one look is all they have, they can't overturn it, I don't think, on just that one angle we saw. Well, you just sit now and wait for New York. This is going to be a tough one to see. His hand gets in there right about now. But you can't see the tag. And you can't see if the, where the tag is at on that one. He stayed on the base, so he never came off with the hand. That's the one thing. where you're saying his hands in the base and then you see that glove up around the A in his jersey on the back. That's all we can see. Yeah. I think we have a decision. 
And the call has been overturned. Anderson gets his second stolen base of the night. And back to the Adam Eaton at bat. It's a 3 2 count. See, he should have waited. Uh, Jimenez should have let the ball track to him. He went out to get it to bring his hand back, and he was too far in front of the base because that was a good throw. Struck him out anyway. So Shane Bieber had to work hard for it. Gets the first out of the inning. Well, give him nine now. And good pitch. He's been after that slider all night long. So there's strike five, I think, to Eaton. <laughs> it was, he threw a couple of really good fastballs, one in, one away. But he gets the strikeout. And it doesn't get any easier. Johan Moncada had an RBI single his last time up. And hit a very good pitch. It was just off the ground that he was able to get through the infield. Missed with a couple of fastballs. Moncada nine for 23 on the year with a runner in scoring position. Make that 10. 10 for 23 with a runner in scoring position. First walk of the night that looked like a pretty good pitch but now there are two on with one out. And up comes Jose Abreu. He is 0 for 2 his fly to right popped up on the infield. Ruben Niebla filling in for Carl Willis who's attending to a personal matter. Niebla calling out to the bullpen. Bieber's at 80 pitches, but he labored in that third inning when they strung together three hits. Matt, you call that a struggle. I go back to both of you guys. I know that one inning was tough, but how about the amount of pitches Bieber's thrown the last two starts? Do you think that plays into it at all? It may. I mean, it, broken back go. ground ball to short. They'll get one there. And they can't turn the double play. Anderson goes to third. Moncada erased two down. Shattered his bat, so it wasn't hit that hard. He throws a nice slider away right off the end of the bat. It's the first time that Abreu's gone after the first pitch tonight. 
And I, I just don't think he hit it hard enough to turn the double play. It was slowly developing. He has about a four hopper down to short, and it's a long turn now. Yeah. He never had a chance to turn it. No, I wasn't saying that, that you know, he struggled. Just had to work hard. He had to labor right. to get through. And, yeah, with the pitch count that he piled up in that last start, you know, two starts ago in Chicago, we talked about that had a playoff kind of feel to yeah. it. I mean, he was really digging deep in that game. And, you know, hey. He's human. Yeah. He, I think it was 113 in Cincinnati, 119 against the Yankees. There was two yeah. career highs. And he was throwing his fastball better early in the game than we've seen him all season. Right field. This will get him out of the inning. And this is a tremendous job by the ace of the staff to get out of that jam and leave the tying run stranded at third base. Well, let's take a look at our Kia player profile. When it comes to hitting them hard off the barrel, Fran Mel Reyes is right up there. 95 and above, huh? How about that? 61% of the time. This goes back to what we talked about with Tito a week ago, guys. Look at all those guys. They're all bigger human beings. There's not a small guy up on that list. That angers you, doesn't it? No, <laughs> because as Tito said, I'm glad you asked. Because as Tito said, that doesn't mean because you're on that scoreboard, that doesn't mean you're a great hitter. Right. He said some of your greatest hitters aren't on there. Jose Ramirez and Altuve being two of them. Mad Girl, a guy that's a pretty good hitter. I'm not going to call him great yet. It's not how hard you hit well, them. It's they put it in play. Right. They, they find a way to get the bat. Like Jose Altuve, for I don't care what size you are, he gets the barrel of the bat to the baseball almost all the time. Better, Almost better than most. Oh, yeah. And I'll go back to something. Earlier in the game, and Matt, this goes back to the conversation we had early, you know, a couple weeks ago. You know, Mad Girl hits a double down the line in the third inning. Half swing. Tim Anderson. Then hits the ball a little bit off the plate down the right field line. Half swing. They just put the ball in play in the third inning, guys. That's well, what got their offense going. You can score without hitting the ball 100 miles an hour. Well, then you better tell the hitters that. Well, you go down there to the dugout, say, I don't will. be afraid to take it the other way. Beats it into the ground. I mean, that's exactly what Keiko wants you to do. And he has found his rhythm. He. He used 27 pitches in the first two innings. And then when they were patient and they made him throw strikes, he walked two in that third inning. He made 27 pitches in the third inning alone. Comes right back out. Seven pitch fourth inning, nine pitch fifth inning. Yep. Got him into a groove, Matt, really. Because he, he, he was on the ropes. At yeah, one point they could have delivered the knockout yes. punch in that inning, no question about it. But they've had their chances this year on knocking out two in the yeah. Yankees series. Uh, Montgomery, the left-hander, and, and Herman. And that changed that whole series. I mean, that, that, that certainly did. Eddie strokes one to deep left field, and it's foul. Is Rosario doing anything different at the plate against Keiko that you're seeing? No, he feels comfortable. He okay. sees the ball. He's not trying to do too right. much because his hands are so good, Andre. He can hit the breaking ball. He's not afraid of him throwing the Fast, fastball pass. by him. There you go. Okay. Because even there, he hits the ball the other way a long way by letting it get deep. You see, Keiko has problems against the left-handers. Hey, he's given up the, the two hits. They only have hits in the one inning. And two lefties got him. And that is a one out single. And then Reyes, or I mean, excuse me, Rosario had the RBI. See, there's his fastball in, and it, it didn't beat him. Right. He just followed it off. So he feels comfortable. He can sit on the breaking pitch and still get, uh, get around for his fastball. Is that just simply a confidence as a hitter? And I was going to get to you guys about this and talk it because I was reading a story in Chili Davis, who's a hitting coach for the Mets. He was going through it when he was in Boston with a couple players. When they got guys in scoring position, they said, my heart rate speeds up, and I don't keep the same. Look at that swing is perfect right there. Mm -hmm. He took a breaking ball the other way that way. He hit it good. Didn't get a hit, but he did, he did a good job there. Keeps his hands back. Yeah, watch. He st and that way, he stayed down and got through it. I mean, he didn't try to do too much with that ball, and he hit it hard the left field. For people who are at home, what you're saying is if he tries to yank that, he just dribbles it to the second base. You're, you're going to probably roll over on right. it. Yes. 
but he wasn't out in front. He, he let the ball get back to him, and that's what you have to do with Keuchel. Because everything that he throws is low in the strike zone. Since Eddie Rosario's RBI single had him on the ropes, they had action in the bullpen. He's retired nine in a row. Well, that's what uh, the good starters do. You give them a second chance or a new life. See that? There's the impatience. He's going out to try and hit that ball, and it's a changeup down out of the zone. And that plays into what Chili Davis was telling his guys in RBI situations. You cannot let your heart rate speed up and forget what your game plan is because that's what will happen. Chili Davis, I think, with Minnesota one time. He shoots one over the head of the shortstop and into shallow left field for a base hit. Chili Davis had 107 RBIs with Minnesota one year, never had a sacrifice fly. Wow. Try Just, doing that. <laughs> that's pretty tough. And he was a switch hitter. Two down for Roberto Perez. He's topped one back to the mound. And on the first pitch in the fourth inning, grounded out the shortstop. Bounced it in there. Two and one. Two balls, two strikes, two down in the sixth. Indians lead it by a run. Rosario, the runner at first base. And he strikes him out. Middle of the sixth, 4 3 Cleveland. Well, the Cincinnati Reds are in town next weekend for the final three games of the Ohio Cup. Fans attending Saturday's game will receive a 2021 magnet schedule. That'll be courtesy of Progressive. Great seats are still available at Indians.com or you can use the ballpark app. Next weekend, the Reds will wrap up our year with them next weekend. Andre, I want to go back to something you brought up earlier about Bieber. You, you mentioned, you know, he's passing guys like Pedro Martinez and Randy Johnson. And is he as appreciated as some of those other pitchers? Right. And the more I think about it, and I, I want to say this with the utmost respect, he's like a younger, better version of Corey Kluber. Corey Kluber won his first Cy Young Award. He was already 28 years old. Right. Shane won last year. He was 24. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I, I all the respect in the world to Corey Kluber. But Shane came along, got here a little quicker. He's a little younger, and he's just taken what Kluber did, and he's just kind of improved on it. Added on it a little bit. It's hard not to compare him. And if you remember, Terry Francona compared him to Corey Kluber and was afraid to early on, too. After he saw him and saw how he went about his business in the background, he said he is, he's got a lot of Corey Kluber to him. And as you said, no disrespect to Corey Kluber in any way, shape, or form. He's a little bit better at this point in time and I'm not yeah. trying to be disrespectful to Corey at all just took Corey a little longer to for it all to come right. together but why is that not and I guess and I guess we're looking at it from our angle I don't know why this guy doesn't lead off every MLB show base hit 
Yasmani Grandal snaps an 0 for 14 slump with a base hit, and he throws his hands to the heavens as if to say, oh, stop the ball game and give me the ball. Well, he just throws that fastball. It's upstairs. He was able to get on top of it. Corey, uh, uh, Bieber got him the first two times up. And then he gets that fastball and he finds a way to find a hole on that right side. So you get another leadoff single. To, to finish your point, Andre, I would say this. Forget what the national pundits and all that. Ask the hitters, and I guarantee you all those hitters would say, I'd rather not have to face Shane Bieber. I was here for that all-star <laughs> game you're, that was here in Cleveland, and you, you just made You're right. Yeah. They were all standing up going, wow, who is this guy during the all-star game? Luis Robert drilled a ball to just to the right of center field. It went for an RBI double, but Ahmed Rosario took a bad angle to the ball. Well, it was only there was two outs. He should have just let it drop for a single. It would have been first and third. They should not have scored in that inning. And when you're looking at the Bieber's pitch count. This will be what pitch number 90. Yeah, I'm trying to look on our monitor. I I can't tell if there's anybody up in the bullpen or not. I think it's quiet. No, it'll be quiet this inning. But I, after this inning, I don't know if he's going to go anymore. He's allowed seven hits on the night. That's the most by Bieber this year. Well, the good news is if he can get through this inning, keep you in the lead. After the off day yesterday, you should have your full complement of oh yeah, the fire blowers out I, there ready. I, I would think so. But he's got to dig deep in this inning. I mean, he's getting to the tail end of this lineup, and I'll tell you, they flip that this lineup over pretty quickly when you get to the top, and they've got a good, good top of the lineup on this ball club. This lineup doesn't thin out at the bottom either, does it? Well, not number nine. You may have one, and that's on deck, but they make you work one through nine, and now he's falling behind Robert. Robert nine for 22 against Indians pitching already this year. Pop no. foul out of play. Elevated the fastball on him. 3 1 count. See, this is where he gets hitters looking down away. Possibly a breaking ball in a 3 1 count, and he can ride that fastball up upstairs on him. And they see it, and they don't want to take it. Bieber ready with the payoff pitch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ring him up with a fastball. Oh, boy. You talk about locking a hitter up. Number 10. He took the fastball, and it was a low dart. So you know what he was looking for. He was sitting for one of the tough off-speed pitches from Bieber. And there we see it. Number 10, uh, it's a low tracer. Now we've got Tony La Russa coming out to talk to home plate umpire Bill Welke. Who knows what sort of gamesmanship that was all about. One on, one out. Andrew Vaughn, the batter. Vaughn 0 for 2. Reached on an error his last time up. This 
This was Vaughn. He's been swinging at that breaking ball off the plate. He finally got a fastball first pitch and he ended up taking it. There, now he's going right back to that slider. He got his token fastball on the first pitch. That's where we talk about sometimes, you know, that first pitch could be the best in the at bat. And if you have a game plan, but this is what he can do to hitters. He can, he can in their mind, just think they're going to continue to get that same breaking ball. And they just seem to know when to throw that fastball and they just freeze. Chase pitch could not entice him. One and two. And the one two swung on it miss he went fishing it came up empty 11 K's for Shane Bieber. Let's take a look at our Nissan pitch tracker the best pitch in that at bat was the first fastball that he took thinking okay now I got him. Well now you got him throwing the sliders and you can't catch up to him and you will go down as victim number 11. Here's Nick Madrigal. And a first pitch slider in for strike one. Madrigal is hit now in 10 of his last 12 games. Painting that fastball all night long on the outside corner. Well, yeah, you know that what this guy's nickname is. He's he's a tough out with two strikes. We know that. Right back to Bieber and the flip ends the inning Shane Bieber 11 strikeouts in six gutty innings of work in Chicago and the Indians lead it four to three. <laughs> Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen has been made by Tony LaRusso. And he'll go to Aaron Bummer after Dallas Keuchel gave him six innings tonight. For a while, it looked like Keuchel wouldn't get out of the third, but he ends up with six innings pitched and then fours across, four hits, four runs, four walks, four strikeouts. Yeah. Well, they're going to get a little different uh, taste of a left-hander with Bummer coming on. He can get it up into the mid 90s. And boy, you would love to just see, man, at this point in time, if you can put another run on the board. <laughs> Here's Yu Chang 0 for 2. Oh, did he hit him? No. Oh, man, I don't know how he got out of the way of that. One ball, one strike. They appeal and they said he went. 
Yeah, it sort of looked like it. it was that back foot slider that he started to go after and watch from this side. We'll get a good look. He did. See, he tried to pull it back there, but he he went after it. Yank that fastball again. Two and two. White Sox play Chang straight up on the infield. Roberts, a center fielder, plays him to pull. And he missed again, down and in with that fastball. Full count. Ball to short, Tim Anderson. Throws him out one away. Time for a Ganley Subaru game break. Here's Al Pulaski. All right, Matt, Rick, the uh, Tigers' magical season continues. They've now lost nine of their last ten. Tonight, the Yankees beat them ten to nothing. Aaron Judge, couple of home runs. This a grand slam. He was two for four, two homers, five runs batted in. Ten nothing Yankees over Detroit. In New York tonight. That fan very excited, by the way, that he caught that uh, home run ball. But I'll tell you what, guys, the Tigers look good the first week. Haven't since then, really. Hey, Houdini, that's your idea of magic? <laughs> yeah, did you like it? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Trick didn't go well. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Andreas Jimenez singled and scored back in the third, struck out in the fourth. Bouncer to first, it's a fair ball. Abreu just takes it himself, two down. He had no other choice, even if he wanted to flip it. Bummer didn't get over there in time. He'd have flipped it to a ghost man. Yes, he would have. That would have been a bummer. Oh. <laughs> Look at, I'm getting booze from the back row. <laughs> We expect so much more out of you. Yeah, don't worry. You got a long uh, tip your weight staff. Okay, that's the here. best you got. Come here and get me another drink. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> and make mine a double. Yeah. <laughs> and give me some cotton for my ears. <laughs> Ouch. I didn't hear you. What'd you say? Oh. Aren't you surprised they went to Bummer after they already had a lefty in the game? And he's their only lefty they have now in the pen? No, I mean, no, because they have their ninth co covered. You know, they're yeah. they're just trying to, they're losing in this effort right now so they can bring him in and hopefully he was at the bottom part bottom of the lineup. lineup. Gotcha. So I would say no on that. Yeah, he's. He hasn't been sharp, but he he's was, got he's got two outs. He was wild against us here. That's what I'm saying. On one game, you know, where he gave right. it up a little bit, I think. He hasn't been. The, he was hurt in spring training and just hasn't been the Aaron Bummer that we were used to seeing. Well, uh, he's hurting his own cause because he's throwing so many pitches. So, you right. know, he can't command his fastball right. right now. But maybe they felt they could get through the bottom part of this lineup. And he walked the first, first two he faced in that game. He came in. Yeah, I remember he couldn't throw yep. strikes. And then Fran Mill got the RBI hit off of him. Doesn't look like Beeves is trying to leave, by the way. Ground ball to short. Anderson throws him out. They go one, two, three. All right, 
right, let's take a look at our Spectre Mobile replay. Well, and once again, it's going to be Shane Bieber and those punch outs. He was, again, dynamic tonight with the breaking ball. Had these guys swinging all night long. 11 strikeouts, pitched ahead in the count. Did give up an 0-2 hit for only the second time this season. But boy, oh boy, he just continues to go out there and roll. Only Nolan Ryan struck out more in the first six starts of the season back in 1978. And again, going back to Andre's earlier point, you know, yeah, Nolan Ryan, the Ryan right. Express, you know, Pedro Martinez, and we, we saw Maybe that's uh, what Randy it is. Johnson's name on there. Maybe we don't have a cool nickname for him because we made fun of his last name when he first came up. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but if he keeps doing this, we, we won't have to scream it. I think the world is seeing it. Well, I mean, even he did. Remember right. when he had the player jerseys? Yeah, not, not Justin. Justin. <laughs> I mean, he's catching up with Justin pretty Classic. quick. Brian Shaw will try to hold the lead here in the seventh. He has the top of the order. Defensively, Jake Bowers has come on to play first base. And we think there's a new second baseman as well. And at least that's what I'm being told. We'll get a, we'll see if we can zoom in and see. If we do, then something happened to Cesar Hernandez. You would not be taking him out of the game for defense. He doesn't come out of the game, period. Well, oh. ball right to that new second baseman. Yu Chang throws him out. Boy, he got a piece of it. Shaw did. I don't know if it got in his glove, a piece of the body, but it was hit hard. He goes right back up, and there's Shaw trying to get out of the way. It catches the end of his glove. He slows it down. Made that play a little bit easier for Chang to get the leadoff man out, and that's a big out to get in this inning. When you can retire Anderson, who has had uh, singles in his last two at bats. Since 2019, no player in baseball has played more innings in the field than Cesar Hernandez. So that's a story in and of itself, because you have to believe something, something happened to him. Yeah, you would think so, absolutely. Well, he, he made the last out in the last inning, so I don't know if anything happened going down the line. Or Rick, what. he told, told me in spring training, the reason why he doesn't come out is because he learned when he was a platoon player, you can lose your job if you're not on the field. So he doesn't, he doesn't come out unless there's an injury because that's what he learned being in Philadelphia. You play every inning if you, that job means something to you. Right now, Adam Eaton at the plate. Hits a ground ball to Chang. Yu feels it cleanly, throws him out, two away. Look, I, I don't want anybody to misunderstand me. It's not that Yu Chang can't play second base. He's a he's played shortstop. He's played third base. He can certainly handle the position. Just the point being that if Cesar's not out there, then you figure something happened to him. Attempt that he catch the finger. Oh, Ooh. yeah, he sure did. He got that uh, one finger Numero uno that ball got it. You're right, and it's a little chilly Temperature game time was 48 so Probably didn't help I'll tell you what th those are two great pitches to Moncada to get ahead of him Yeah, it looked like it caught that uh, first finger on his right hand. It would be his throwing hand Nice. Swing and a miss. Brian Shaw, hot knife through butter. White Sox go in order. We go to the eighth. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians.
We go now to the eighth inning. And the Indians with a 4-3 lead. 2-3-4 hitters due up for Cleveland. Evan Marshall will be the new pitcher for the White Sox. Tenth appearance of the year for Marshall. Jordan Luplo will lead it off. He has walked twice and scored a run. Seems like every time we play the White Sox, this guy comes into the ball game at some point in time. Marshall slider, changeup, and fastball. And he will mix it up, and you'll see a lot of changeups if there's left handed hitters up there. I realize because of divisional play and play each team in the division so many times, you see guys a lot. But there are certain pitchers, relief pitchers, where it just seems like they pitch every game yeah. against you. Sure you know? it does. And he's one of them. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> Here's the 2-0. You know who? You know who just came to mind? Who? Tiny Tim Collins from Kansas oh, City. <laughs> Didn't it seem like he pitched every game? Oh, was yeah. left-handed? He did at one time. Yeah. He was, yes. And I'm thinking with Minnesota, Taylor Rogers. Oh, yeah. Yep. There was a time when... Uh, Oh, I can see it. I can see him, but I can't remember his name all of a sudden. Uh, long time with the Detroit and Texas. Um, no, right handed reliever. Um, oh, man. <laughs> Don't think about it. It'll come to you. Yeah. Driven to deep center field. Robert on the run. Makes a great catch in full stride to steal extra bases away from Jordan Luplo. Well, you'll see he got a very good jump on the baseball and just outran that one. Right at the end, he had a little lunge to it to go up there and made a nice running catch. Watch the angle. You'll see the jump he gets on the ball. Very good jump. He was off and running from the get-go. Right at the end, you jump up, run down, and there you go. He knew he had a chance at it all the way. Yeah, that's what happens. You save a pitcher and you're saying thank you. And there's a, a hitter that says, my goodness, I thought it was going to be in there. He's not saying thank you. No, he's <laughs> something else. Joaquin Benoit was the guy I was trying to think oh, of. Oh, okay. Remember with Detroit? Yes. It seemed like every oh, he was game with he pitched against the Indians. That was good. Ramirez with the biggest hit of the night for Cleveland. Two run single back in the third. And he launches one high in the air. Deep right field. Eaton is back. He's out of room. It's out of here. Oh, Ramirez has done it again. His second home run of the year against the White Sox. And this one extends the lead to 5 3. His seventh on the season. Tying in with Fred Mill Reyes for the team lead. Boy, I'll tell you, that's a, that's a big insurance run right there. Ramirez hits his seventh, and it couldn't have come at a better time. There's your changeup we were talking about, and guess what? He's his last out he hit it as hard as he's hit a ball all night long. So Hosey now with three RBIs in this ball game. Oh, that's a big extra run right there. Matt, about two and a half hours ago, you were saying how, man, Jose Ramirez just couldn't get any hits against the Chicago White right? Sox. And, and aren't you right? He hit the ball just as hard. His last the, the last might have been as shortstop. hard as any of Yes. Good time for the Indians to get it. Perfect. They needed something. That's the only run that they scored. We're in the third inning. 
and they only had one other hit after that. Right. And it helps that helps the bullpen because we just talked about going against their top of their order with Shaw was huge. But knowing you had to get six more outs. Yes. Four, five, six. It's tough. See, he's talking uh, how he gets that front foot down and, and talk about hitting that changeup. But that changeup was middle of the plate. Oh, Ooh. look out. Don't try to catch that one. South side of Chicago. Man. <laughs> they ain't scared. <laughs> they ain't scared, but they may be drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Guaranteed. They may not have any feeling in their hands anyway. That's right? what you're saying. I guarantee. <laughs> Jose Ramirez with another clutch performance tonight. To third, Moncada. Two down. And we'll get a word from Cleveland Clinic. Cleveland Clinic. For the last 100 years and the next. Now Eddie Rosario will see if any of those pointers from Jose Ramirez pay off for him here. Eddie had an RBI knock in that third inning. Swings at the high fastball and fouls it back. Comes the change up. Left field, routine play, inning over. Jose Ramirez has driven in three tonight for Cleveland. His home run has him up two as we go to the bottom of the eighth. James Karinchek on to pitch the eighth inning for the Tribe. Twelfth appearance of the year for James. Twenty strikeouts in nine and two yeah, thirds innings. Yeah, to another uh, very good start to this season. Shaw came in and had a, a, a wonderful seventh inning. He went through the top three. To me, that was a, like a save at that point because it was a one-run ball game, and you had Anderson, a guy that uh, has been awfully tough. But now they've got that uh, one extra run. Jose Abreu will lead off 0 for 3 tonight. Fastball gets a hit. Was a wicked curveball. And the count of two. She go 95, and then this is by 83 miles an hour. Whoop. Yeah, that's one pitch, boy. I don't know how you're going to swing at that. Well, they like to hit breaking balls. He does, so you know, but that's an awful tough one to hit if it's a good one. I don't think you hit a good one of his. And blew it right by him at 96. Oh, 
Yeah, this is, uh, he just overmatched him in this at bat. Then he came back and threw that fastball inside and ties him up. So he had a chance to get two uh, fastballs in that at bat. Both were strikes. He swung at the breaking ball. It was a ball. So to get that first man down, always good. Now your mean Mercedes, one for three, singled and scored in the second. Has struck out and flied out since then. I was wondering if he would uh, shorten up the leg kick. The guy throwing as hard as Karen check. But not early. Not <laughs> early in an at bat. He won't. He wants to do damage. One ball, one strike. You'll see when he gets on that front toe, boy, you know it's going it to catch. Arch, it, I want to see him lift that big foot and see the hammer coming, get that curve and see how he reacts. Well, you may get a chance I to see, see it, it right here. <laughs> I like these type of matchups. If he throws a good one, he's not going to hit it. Ninety five at the top of the zone and it's one and two. You know, Karen check wouldn't say this, but he's been throwing more fastballs lately. And what's wrong with that? I, no, I think, it, but it's given him his control. I, I get you got to establish that first before you right. go to that, because if you come out with that, your curveball and, and you're falling behind with it, it forces you to go with that and they fastball and they, they eliminate everything else. Bounce that one in there. I think that fastball is a lot easier to establish when you come into a game than that curveball is. Now, there may be times where he's just got a great feel for it and he can do it. But boy, I think it's a little easier. He gets ahead with the fastball. Then you go to that breaking ball. It all depends on his feel because he right. throws that breaking ball hard all the time. I think he does everything 100 miles an hour. You're probably right. <laughs> the mentality like that. Yes. 110 miles an hour. He got up there to it and fought it off. Two balls, two strikes. With one out here in the bottom of the eighth. Left field. Rosario makes the catch two down. And that'll bring up the catcher Yasmani Grandal, who snapped an 0 for 14 slump with the single in the sixth inning. But even with that base hit, he's just three for his last 39. There you go, first pitch. That was a nasty curveball. Oh, he came back with another one, and it's 0 and 2. The two strike offering. Beats it into the ground. <laughs> Jack, like he was shot out of a cannon one after that one.
Two down. 0 oh, 2 Kel. He started the inning with a strikeout. Randall fouls it off. the curveball. He wants him to throw one down. Five or six straight curveballs. That's all he's seen. He hasn't seen a fastball in this at bat. Might see one here. One ball, two strikes. Remember they they had a cross up, I think it was in Chicago, when he <laughs> threw a curveball and oh almost boy. broke Roberto's finger with it. Yeah, he sure did. You're right, that was back in Chicago. Roberto's smiling <laughs> about something. He's just looking at him, saying, well, "That guy's." He's great. like, "Dude, you got two pitches. Yeah. It's either one or the other." <laughs> I think Roberto's <laughs> reminding him of what you just reminded everybody else. <laughs> he almost broke my finger once. Yeah. We're not doing this again. <laughs> Oh. Here we go with a one two pitch. <laughs> Behind him, but out of play. <laughs> and now Roberto's sharing the funny anecdote with Bill Welke. Okay you want to throw the fastball here we go. Just like his last name the inning started with a K and it ends with a K. Uh, James Karachek with a one two three bottom of the eighth and we'll recap our storylines brought to you by Arby's Indians approach against the changeup of Dallas Keiko. Well they got three runs. I'm sorry four runs in the third inning equaling their biggest inning of the year against Keiko and then Shane Bieber set a major league record with his 18th consecutive start of at least eight strikeouts. He went six and struck out eleven tonight. Now Matt Foster on to pitch the top of the ninth for Chicago. Indians leading at five to three. Foster's ninth appearance of the year. He'll have the six, seven, and eight hitters due up for Cleveland.
strike at the knees outside corner. Emmanuel Classe getting loose in the Cleveland bullpen. Boy, they had it set up perfectly after Bieber gave him the six. They added on one run after they had the four in the third. Nice pitch. Matt Foster gave up eight runs in 28 and two-thirds innings last year. He's given up nine already this year in just over six innings of work. Swing and a miss, struck him out. That's the bad news if you're Matt Foster. The good news for him is that he had one bad outing this year in which he gave up five runs in two thirds of an inning. That came uh, in a game out in Seattle. So you take that away, and all of a sudden yeah, it doesn't look as right. Bad. That's what it happens uh, to a reliever if you you go out there in less than your first ten appearances. You know when you're not going more than an inning and you give up five. You're going to have to work all year long to get that thing down, it seems like. And your good relievers that at least have some track record, I think are able to put that behind them and not look at the numbers and just plow through it. It's the young guys I'm sure managers and pitching coaches worry about because you know, can he put that behind him and not be thinking about that last outing when he goes back That's out there? That's why the next managers time. always like veteran relievers, guys that have right. been around and they've got their track record because they know what it takes. And it's good to have some younger guys around when you have a veteran bullpen because they can learn, you know, the way they think, the w how they go about doing things. Yeah, and I'm sure, I'm sure a veteran reliever would never go to the manager and say, "Hey, this guy, he he doesn't get it," or "This guy's not very good." But the manager, if you don't apply what's what's right in front of you, the manager will figure that out. Oh yeah, for himself that you're you're not getting with the program. Well, he'd have to talk with one of his pitching coaches, say, "What's wrong with this guy?" Yeah, <laughs> you know, he'll find out one way or another. Off the plate. I mean, nowadays uh, they carry eight, nine bullpen guys. You don't like the Indians. What do we have? 13 pitchers on the roster. We have a 12 man, uh, you know, players. And the 2 2 is swung out and missed. There's two strikeouts on two changeups. He gets that heater over there early. And it's a second swing at a changeup. Righty on righty. There it is. Same pitch to Rosario he went down with. So you know your point about the, the Indians roster, and Tito shared that with us that you know this isn't exactly the way he thought it was going to play out. But when all of a sudden you have a young pitcher like Logan Allen. He gets runs into early inning troubles and, and now you know you, you're calling up guys and you're, you're reshuffling on the fly. I'm sure he would rather have one extra position player and one less bullpen guy. But right oh, yeah. now that's not going to happen. Well true you, you need the arms when you're going through a, uh, especially this road trip when you're going through Chicago and Kansas City. Right and the, the Logan the old Logan is part of it but Tristan McKenzie hasn't got through a fifth inning yet. Oh, either. Right. He's. You know, so that's part of the yeah. reason why he's. And then Sam Hinches is most likely going to start Wednesday, I believe, against Kansas City. And I think you're right, Arch. You know, you go to the White Sox. If the starting pitcher has a bad day, he can get bad quick here or against Kansas City. Right. So do they only want three guys on the bench? No. No. But he wants to cover well, his I back. I mean, you're, you're you're limited. You can't right. you can't do anything. Well, look at tonight. You have Chang that has to stay in the game. I want to see what happened to Hernandez. Now right. a guy that's out there every day. 
even though he has been struggling offensively. The Indians go one, two, three. Classe will try to close it out next. Well, James Karachek and Roberto Perez, as I mentioned, it was a game back in Chicago earlier this year. Oh, boy. <laughs> where he crossed him up and. He's lucky, yeah, he ended up trapping that ball. Runner on second base, extra innings. He's like, all right, let's get this straight now. Get this ironed out. And then tonight. Well, let's get on the same page this time. And I, I don't know what he's explaining, but look at Roberto saying, this guy's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Shakes his head, he get, comes back, throws that low heater, gets the strikeout. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, man. <laughs> oh, God. That cannot be an easy guy to catch out there, especially sometimes when he doesn't know what he's throwing. Well, <laughs> Emmanuel Classe. On the pitch here, bottom of the ninth, he has the seven, eight, nine hitters in the lineup. Luis Robert, one out of three tonight. He doubled in a run back in the second inning. Pours it in there at 100. Sox will bring the tying run to the plate. He stayed back nicely on the slider. There you'll see the spinner right there. It comes back, hit it off the end, but gets enough of it. Got the foot down and, and follows through, and he's going. They're going to get the leadoff man aboard and get at least a tying run to the plate. Leori Garcia is going to bat for Andrew Vaughn. Outside ball one. Garcia eight for 23 in his last seven games. Boy, right on the outside edge, that was paint. And some quick drying paint at that. Garcia saw extensive action in the doubleheader sweep over Detroit yesterday for the White Sox. Combining for five runs batted in on the afternoon. This is the second longest tenured uh, White Sox behind Abreu. Good pitch. Not called. Well, I, I know we've seen him call that tonight. He's been he's called that low pitch tonight. Right there. And it's coming so fast that knocked the glove down a little bit the way Perez was catching the ball. Weak ground ball hit this short. There's one and they can't turn the double play. So Garcia beats it out. One on 
One out. Nick Madrigal coming up. They didn't really hit it hard enough to get the double play. You know, so it looked a little funky with that turn. Tell you what, Jake Bowers did a really nice job. Come off the base and knock it down. Yeah. You weren't going to get him anyway. Nick Madrigal one for three with a double and a run scored. situation you just got to look for that fastball <laughs> at 100 and if you're going to get after it, you better put a short swing on it that part oh, he has down that was I mean you couldn't throw a better pitch down and away it had to look like it had a little cut to it as well I mean you, you look at that right on the corner at the knees you, you couldn't make a better pitch and that's the pitch you need to do that every pitcher's got to have in his arsenal 2 0 3 1 where you can make that kind of pitch. Comes oh. right back. Wow. I mean pinpoint accuracy on the outside. Absolutely corner. nothing you can do if you're the hitter. You can't do anything about it. But you know, the only thing you hope for you get into a hitter's count. Well he was but he is no longer. But this guy thrives in these situations because he has that short stroke ability he's going right back out there with the heater Two count with Tim Anderson waiting on deck. Runner goes. Chop to second. Chang will field it and throw him out. Two down. Yeah, they started the runner. They stayed out of the double play. That's because Garcia could run a little bit and they figured this guy could put the ball in play. And now you've got your leadoff hitter up. So down to the last out for the White Sox. Well, it wasn't that long ago. Madrigal was down to two strikes like that. He plugged the gap and got them rolling, you know, and then extra innings. I think he was a walk-off hit for him. So he is a guy that Tony La Russa already has a great deal of confidence in those situations. And now you've got the always dangerous Tim Anderson. Two hits tonight. That gives him 18 hits in his last 12 games. This is one of those hitters that finds a way to get the put the bat on the baseball. Right back to second base. Yu Chang throws him out. Book it. The Indians go to Chicago and take the series opener. Shane Bieber gets the win, his third, and Emmanuel Classe nails it down in the bottom of the ninth for his fifth save. The Indians get back to 500. They're now 12 and 12, and the White Sox. Are now 14 and 11. These two teams have split the first six games of the season series. 
entertaining ball game. Dallas Keuchel, by the way, ends up with the loss. He is one and one on the year. Shane Bieber, another gutsy performance. The ace of the staff really held them in check. He did give up a couple of runs in the third inning. White Sox actually scored first, but after that, he he was nails as always with 11 strikeouts on the night. I'll tell you what, what a ball game. Uh, you know, Bieber came back. He gave up that first run that he shouldn't have, but the Indians come right back, and they put it in the third inning at four spot up there. And that, that was really all they needed. And then he turned it over to that pitching staff, and it was pretty awesome, wasn't it? It's tough to do, hold that White Sox team down, but uh, they did a tremendous job coming out of the bullpen tonight. And Bieber as well, uh, just a treat to watch. All right, let's uh, send it out to Alan Jensen, Indians live postgame set. So this streak came to an end tonight. The Indians had a lot of home run in 11 straight games. That's gone. Put that, uh, put that to bed. Jose Ramirez. Now has an eight-game hitting streak with three home runs, seven runs batted in. But I have a feeling you're going to want to talk about that Bieber guy because he did some special <laughs> things tonight, too. <laughs> he certainly did, Matt. Eleven more strikeouts tonight for Shane Bieber. He's now the first pitcher in Major League history to strike out at least eight or more in 18 consecutive games, passing Randy Johnson. Uh, and that bullpen, not too Pretty shabby, good. the big three. No runs allowed Just again. Just it again. Yes. You have the lead late. If you're the Tribe, you're in a good spot. Oh, and Jose Ramirez hitting a clutch homer late. It's just another, what, yeah, it's become Friday? Another whole home win for yeah. the Cleveland Indians. We'll take it. 5-3 is the final score. They defeat the White Sox. Plenty to talk about tonight. We'll hear from Tito when we come back in a little bit on Indians Live. Also, we'll head down to the clubhouse, see if we can talk to Shane. Indians win 5-3. They take game one of this three-game set in Chi-Town. We're back right after this.